Belgium's King Philippe has expressed his deepest regrets for his country's brutal rule in its former colony, the Democratic Republic of Congo. The for independence became impossible to ignore and Belgium, though reluctant to give up its profitable colony, quickly started negotiations. <laughs> People have been marching on the streets of the capital, Kinshasa. Church leaders, rights groups and opposition politicians called for the demonstrations. They say President Chisigeti is trying to take control of the Electoral Commission ahead of elections due in two years. They were also protesting against a new tax on mobile phone users. Everyone who owns a phone pays at least a few dollars every month, deducted from their credit. It's barely affordable for many of Congo's 40 million phone users. One step in this direction is the return of some Congolese artifacts that had been in Belgian museums for decades. King Philip brought with him an initiation mask from Congo's Suku people. Lumumba became the Congo's first prime minister after it gained independence in 1960. But he was only in office for a few months before he fell out with the country's former colonial ruler which led to him being ousted in a coup, imprisoned, tortured, and later executed. The bears. Protesters gathered outside Rwandan embassy in the capital of Kinshasa and in the eastern city of Bakuvu that touches the Rwandan border. Rwandans go home, slogans rocked both of the cities as fresh clashes erupted between the Congolese army and the M23 that spread close to Goma, an important commercial hub of one million people in eastern DRC. Both Congo and Rwanda have accused each other of cross-border shelling in recent weeks. This village primary school in Congo was caught in the crossfire. Two children were killed and buried nearby. One of them was Sifa Ninera's seven-year-old son, Isaac. She says he was playing with friends when he was blown to pieces. In 1911, an Englishman by the name of William Lever, later to become Lord Leverhulme, was granted a concession by the Belgian government to develop large-scale production of palm oil in the Belgian Congo. Then, in lonely villages, the people listened to the white man, weighed their proposals to work and harvest the land. And having listened, they consulted among themselves. Democratic Republic of Congo. We are going into Rwanda so they can kill us, as they are doing with the M23 rebels, because we are tired of this ongoing situation in our country. The protesters and Congo's government blame Rwanda for being behind a recent series of attacks in Congo by the M23 rebel group. The importance of music was demonstrated during the negotiations for independence in Brussels. When one of Lumumba's diplomats proposed importing Kabasele and a group of musicians from the Congo to improve rapport. It was 61 years ago that Patrice Lumumba was executed by a firing squad in Democratic Republic of Congo with help from Belgian mercenaries. A Belgian police officer cut his body into pieces and dissolved it in a barrel of acid, but kept his gold tooth as a trophy and took it back to Belgium. Je vous demande de faire de ce 30 juin 1960 une date illustre que vous garderez ineffaceablement gravée dans vos cœurs, une date dont vous enseignerez avec fierté la signification à vos enfants pour que ceux-ci, à leur tour, fassent connaître à leurs fils et à leurs petits-fils 
l'histoire glorieuse de notre lutte pour la liberté. La République du Congo a été proclamée et notre cher pays est maintenant entre les mains de ses propres enfants. Ensemble, mes frères, mes sœurs, nous allons commencer une nouvelle lutte. Une lutte sublime. Congolais, unis dans l'effort pour l'indépendance.
evening, everybody. How are we doing tonight? Good? Oh, come on. How are we doing tonight? Yes, good, 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 good. So before I start, can we just make a round of applause for my little sister Zoe who did the, you know, intro? Let's make some noise for Zoe. Zoe, I'm so proud of you. Um, Jumbo, Mbote, Kia ora, and welcome to the 62nd Independence Celebration. Can we make some noise? Cool, so I understand the hall might be a little bit cold, but I'm gonna need your participation. So I'm gonna need your energy, involvement, make some noise. Let's cheer on the people who come on stage. And also, um, when people are speaking, really appreciate it if we could pay attention um, to what they're saying tonight. Um, so my name is Favor, and I'll be your host for tonight. You're all looking lovely. Make some noise for yourselves. Ooh, that, mm, the energy's not there. Make some noise for yourself. There we go, there we go, there we go. So quick housekeeping. Um, so the bathrooms are down the back near the entrance where you came just on your left in case of a fire or any kind of emergency. We have multiple emergency exits, just one on my left here. Back to where we came from, from the entrance and on the sides over here. So we'll meet in the car park and we'll be told what to do next. So. Um, the theme for this year is the paradoxes of the Democratic Republic of Congo. There are two sides to every story. Um, there is still a lot of bloodshed, corruption, and suffering that tries to overshadow our tenacity. And although, that, although the DRC has made some forward um, some forward-thinking efforts, um, we still push forward despite all the obstacles that um, come in our way. So tonight as we commemorate the 62nd independence, we also want to make room to kind of understand and also see the complexities of our experiences as a nation. So to start off our night, we have an opening speech by our president. Can we make a round of applause for President Francois? Can we make another round of applause, make it nice and louder, make some noise, make some noise. Thank you, Favor, and thank you everyone for welcoming me on, uh, on the stage. So, yeah. As we have known, uh, I know some of you, so my name is Francois. Uh, bonsoir, Kiora, Betuabwe, Jambo, Mbotenabino. So, bienvenue à, à vous tous, uh, and a warm welcome to you all in all Congolese languages. We've got uh, 243, so I can't say everything. And um, I would like first to thank uh, God who have enabled us uh, to gather together here tonight to celebrate our 62nd uh, Independence Day uh, uh, celebration. And um, so uh, allow me first um, uh, to kind of um, acknowledge the people who came to visit us, some uh, special guests that we have. So first, I would like to acknowledge uh, uh, Melissa Lee, who is a member of parliament, uh, spokesperson for the National Party. As you know, Melissa has, is a good friend of us, especially African community and uh, the Congolese as well. So thank you, Melissa, for being present. And uh, also, I would like to acknowledge uh, the president of uh, the ACOFI, Mrs. Uh, yeah, Evelyn Park. So thank you for coming, taking time to come here. And um, also, I would like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Aban Yo, who is the chief of uh, ARCC, Aotearoa uh, Resettle Community. Thank you, Aban. And uh, also, I would like uh, quickly to acknowledge the presence of uh, the police, um, New Zealand police, Inspector Kelly Ferrin. He's there. With, uh, they're supposed to be with Justin, with uh, Kevin. So thank you for coming. And uh, we've got uh, two special guests uh, tonight. 
And uh, for me, I think uh, it's good to introduce you. They are from, uh, uh, one is uh, uh, the, new, the, the US Defense uh, Attaché here in uh, New Zealand. So it's, um, let me get, so it's Shane Fisher. And also we have uh, our own uh, brother, who is also in US, uh, US uh, Navy. It's uh, brother Roy, who's there. So they are here, they came from uh, Wellington, and they are with um, the US Navy, who's working with uh, the, the defense, uh, New Zealand defense uh, at the same time. So uh, it's a blessing for us uh, to be here, and a great pleasure to commemorate uh, this significant uh, day of uh, the history of the Democratic uh, of Congo. So, and uh, as you have heard, so we are continuing on uh, our theme uh, of last year, for example, so those uh, stories that we don't know. And uh, this year, it's more about the paradoxes of uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. As uh, you have seen on uh, some of the videos, so the Congo is a rich country, but um, still we, we're going through some uh, issues uh, in our country, and especially uh, today we would like to call out a bit loud, so what is happening there, and especially with um, another attack from uh, the Rwanda army, uh, supporting the rebel of uh, M23, M23, in the eastern part of Congo. So it has been uh, about uh, four decades now that there is a, a bit of unrest in the eastern part of the Congo. We know that it's uh, all about uh, our mineral resources that is there, but uh, and, uh, rebels, uh, neighbor country that we call uh, brother and sisters, and um, also multinational that are behind there and try to cause all those uh, disruption, bloodshed, and all that. So during this uh, year, so there has been uh, over 10 million of Congolese people died in the eastern part of Congo. So the Congolese people want peace and uh, we want to see our country develop and uh, having a meaningful uh, relationship with our neighbor. But uh, we can't tolerate anymore for a very long time that uh, especially the Rwanda army coming and uh, try to support the rebel and create those uh, disruption in the eastern part so that uh, the mineral of the Congo can uh, be looted out of the country, but what is left behind, it's uh, those family that has been uh, tear apart, displaced, and uh, most uh, mainly uh, killed, and uh, especially young children. So this 62 uh, uh, anniversary, uh, we, we like to call again and to remind everyone and especially the New Zealand government, uh, as well as the, the United Nations, to look at uh, those issues that is going on, because we have been talking about it for a very long time. And uh, one of the, our disappointments, because we, the Congo did ask to the United States, uh, United uh, uh, Nation, to allow the Congolese uh, army to to, to be able to, to get weapons, because we have been uh, into a sanction for now about uh, 20 years, that, uh, but we can see rebels uh, having uh, more weapons, so we, we know where they come from, so, but at least uh, it's just to show them how they can get all those uh, new weapons while the Congolese army can't buy any. Uh, and uh, so those are the issues that uh, we still uh, talk about. 
But in terms of uh, our independence, because we want uh, Congo to be independent for a very long time, and our independence uh, for our people is really important. That's why we always want to celebrate, as uh, Patrick and Mary Lumumba have said on uh, that speech, so for us to show the significance of that. We know we're still struggling for uh, liberty, but uh, for us being able to determine what we want to do for our country is really important. That's why we call to all Congolese to come together and uh, to be united and strong and uh, to keep on being resilient for us to achieve what uh, we want to achieve with our country and for ourselves here in New Zealand as well. So we will have a, I wish that we will have a good celebration. And uh, one significant uh, things that happened also this year was uh, they talked about the tooth. So at least there has been a closure this year for not only Patrice Mary Lumumba's family, but for all Congolese. That's the Belgium, uh, the king of Belgium, who came to visit Congo uh, in uh, May, June. So he came to apologize for what happened uh, with uh, the Belgium during the, colo the, the colonial time, and especially for the killing of uh, Patrice Mary Lumumba. So we finally had an opportunity as a country to mourn our brother who fought for this independence that we are celebrating today. So by returning uh, his tooth and some of um, his effects that uh, the Belgium took uh, in, uh, in, in their uh, country. So for us, uh, it's to remind us that uh, the fight of uh, the independence and liberty, it's a work of age and one of us uh, here uh, present and also across the world. So I would like you to remember that, and especially when we know Congo is rich, but that uh, all those uh, mineral resources that we use on different things that we've got doesn't benefit entirely to the Congolese people. I would like to finish the speech by uh, saying thank you. A thank you, a special thank you to our young, uh, to some special young people from the Congolese community who put this together. Uh, if they've got the possibility of uh, coming here, so you can also acknowledge them. I would like you to put your hand together for them. So I would like to thank uh, Feva Uka, <laughs> Daniela Matondo, <laughs> Naomi Kabimbi, <laughs> Aznat Kabimbi, Francis Kaembe, Oli Mesu Kaembe, Blessing Mudungwa, where's Blessing? Zoe Uka, so this young yeah, this young uh, <laughs> woman and uh, young girls and uh, our lovely boy. Unfortunately, sometimes it's only him. <laughs> so, or fortunately, <laughs> so to have all the girls around him. And uh, so they are the one for which uh, we need to say thank for everything that you will uh, enjoy tonight. So all the decoration, all uh, the program. So thank you again for your work, for the community, for what you do for us. And uh, that means that uh, my work sometimes is easier because I know I've got people who will come behind and uh, take the leadership of our uh,
community and our country. Thank you again. So, yeah, thank you everyone. Have a wonderful night. Congo is one of the most mineral-rich countries in the world. It's got gold, diamonds, copper, uranium, cobalt, and coltan, which you use every day. It's in mobile phones, laptops, even jet engines. There's estimated to be more than $24 trillion worth of mineral wealth under Congo soil. It starts with the story of a great crime. Back in 1885, a king in search of an empire created a state the size of Western Europe. King Leopold of Belgium drew borders through ancient kingdoms, forcing 450 different ethnic groups into a new state. Leopold's plunder of the natural resources caused as many as 10 million deaths. It sparked the world's first human rights campaign, which forced the king to hand over the country to the Belgian state. But Congo remained a place where the white man dominated and exploited. Enter. A new hope for Africa. We have known the ironies, the insults, the coups that we had to suffer on the night. The independence leader, Patrice Lumumba, inspired millions across the continent. But the West saw Lumumba as an enemy. The Belgians supported a rebellion against the new government in the mineral-rich east of the country. And when Lumumba appealed to the Soviet Union for help, the Belgians conspired with the CIA to murder him. Chato suye, poki 
Watani na mokili ya Kongo Kongo molili esili Um, so let's make some noise for Congo. Let's make some noise for Congo. There we go, there we go. So um, up next we have a quick speech um, from Evelyn Park, uh, the president of our coffee. Can we make some noise for her, please? Can we make some noise for her, please? Look, her fabulous outfit. Make some noise. Bonsoir. Good evening, Jambo. Kia ora. Mulishani, that's from my language. I've been warned I've only got five minutes, but I'll say this, Sister Genevieve, I came here at 5.30, so I waited a long time. <laughs> but um, it's always very exciting to be amongst the Congolese community. Selfishly, as I shared with you last year, I am part Congolese. Actually, I am full-blooded Congolese. My family migrated into Zambia from the eastern side of the Congo, which is actually where most of the trouble is happening right now. So I am very connected to the Congolese culture. I'm wearing a dress made by a Congolese. Thank you, Sister Irene. Are you in the house? Where are you? Is she here? Is your mum here? Oh my goodness, she's late. <laughs> anyway, it is with mixed emotions that we gather as Africans to celebrate such incredible moments where our forefathers fought for independence. And to look back, as you see from the videos, the, the sadness and the degree to which they went in order to get uh, to get us to have freedom from the colonizers. But it's also very sad to see that much as we seem to have broken away, we are still under the spell of colonization because what's going on right now is as a result of what happened all those years ago. So really important for our children, and I'm grateful for the young people in our community to be doing this, to be getting involved, to be researching your history and sharing with the rest of us. Because the story, and it's a pity there's not a lot of Kiwis in here, but the stories that you're seeing here is actually not just unique to the Congolese community, it is across African countries. And as families of African uh, communities in New Zealand, we are striving to just come together. And as we keep sharing and looking back, we find a commonality to try and continue. Brother Francois has been in my shoes as president of the African Communities Forum Incorporated. And I think you will agree with me that president after president, we're striving for one thing, to unite the community. And it's not an easy process because some of the issues we are facing is as a result of the, the, the discontentment and disunity that has been imposed upon us from where we come from. But we are not going to stop. And I love the song that has just played towards the end about Congo uniting. Let's just take that across the entire community of Africa in New Zealand. We really need to unite. We need to unite in order for our history to keep moving forward. We are in a country where the people of the land are also striving to get their history to move forward, maintain their culture and keep their languages alive. This is where we are. It will be great to see that you, your Swahili, your Lingala and the other 200 languages within the community do not get drowned. That by coming together we can continue to share. 
So, I know that's probably my five minutes gone, but may I please steal another two minutes? Sister Genevieve said to me, we would like you to speak about what a perfect partnership would look like between the Congolese community and Akofi. Now, for those of you that don't know what Akofi is, Akofi is basically, it is the community leadership for the entire communities of Africans in Auckland. And every two years, we elect a new president. My term is nearly coming to an end. This is my second year. But what I'm excited about, going back to the topic I was given, what, a, what a, an ideal or a perfect partnership would look like, it will look like this. And I'll steal something from Brother Francois. I'm pleased to see the young people stepping up because at the end of my term, which is coming up very shortly, i like to see one of you, Congolese, young males or young females, the youth, You've already shown and proven that you can do this. We need you in this space. Succession plan in our community is important. I don't intend to stick around, I intend to support. So I'm wanting the support of the young people to step up. So that to me is a beginning of a, of a perfect partnership between Akofi and the Congolese community. Secondly, engagement and participation. By each one of us coming to attend and sharing, bathing in the beauty and the depth of your soul, as we are doing right now, this needs to continue. A coffee needs to be amongst you to learn more about you and you coming to what a coffee is organizing at a larger or wider community level. Recently, we organized a, um, a well-being luncheon for the women we had 60 of them attend and it was fantastic to see that everyone yet again is just yearning to be together to unite and move forward and what i would like to see is that we have got a program going on right now we have seen that through the suffering congolese people are resilient people and you're teaching us a lot we have got a program going on for the women and the young women in the community on resilience right now. I would really like to see a lot more Congolese youth, female and the, lay, and the women, boys and, 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 and our men. We are not forgetting about you. Yes, there's something coming for you too, but right now there's a six week program coming, uh, going on on resilience for the women. The next one is on the 30th of July. Sister Genevieve has got the details. She will share with all of you. Please register. It's fully funded. It's paid for. We'd like to see more of that. Um, the last one is the vision for the future. We are all here because we want a better tomorrow. And a better tomorrow is only going to come if we work together and stick together. So I'd like to thank Brother Francois and Sister Genevieve and another sister, Sister Marie Claire, she's called Mama Africa from, she's come all the way from Hamilton. They, put, and, and brother, brother Aban who's here, he's not Congolese, he's from South Sudanese, Sudan, but he participated in this, um, in this uh, program. So what has been going on um, during the month of May within the African communities, we got together and we started looking at a strategy about the, views, the, the vision for the future, what it is that we want to identify what are the priorities we want for our community. And three priorities stuck out. It was well-being, education, and employment. Young people in the Congolese community, what do you want the vision for the future to be? Your leaders already participated in that. So what we would like to see, a coffee, your leadership, and the unification that you're already bringing together, we need to gather yet again so that you can look at those priorities and the entire strategy, the proposal, the draft that's, on, that's coming shortly so that it's brought to your community to sit down and look at it and identify what do you want the future to look like 
for yourselves as the Congolese community, but then also at a wider community of the Africans community here in New Zealand. Because if we don't have a united voice, we cannot influence the policy changes in this country. During COVID lockdown, we experienced what it is to be marginalized in this country. Resources were being given to just about every other ethnic group. Africans were at the bottom. We need to stick together with one voice, set our priorities so we can get, you know, um, parliamentarians like Melissa Lee and anybody else who sits in that power to say, we cannot give you our vote if we don't feel and see that you're representing us correctly. So thank you very much. And I really appreciate for giving me a little bit more time. And I appreciate that you invited me back this year. And I look forward to being amongst you for most of the evening. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So before we move on, um, I think it would be awesome if we played a quick game. So this is where I really need your participation. So um, with, if I'll get, put your hands up if you enjoy Congolese music. Hands up if you enjoy Congolese music. Let's go. Yeah. Yes, good. Okay, now put your hands up if you understand what they're saying in the music. Okay, there we go. So, we're gonna play a quick game, it's called Finish the Lyrics. So I'll get some volunteers to come up. I'll get you to come up, and what we're gonna do is we'll play the song, we'll stop it, and then you have to finish the lyrics. Let's see if you actually know the words. So, can I get some volunteers? Can I get some volunteers? Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Christelle, come on. Yeah. Come up, come up. We'll get, we'll have, we'll just do three people. Three people for this one. Yep, come up, come up. Can we give them a round of applause, everyone? Okay. Okay, Zoe, you come. Okay. Okay, so um, our DJ will play the song, and then when I put the mic to you, you're going to finish the lyrics. And audience, feel free to join in as well. Let's see if you know it. So I want to hear you join in as well. Okay, DJ, let's do the first song. <laughs> not yet, not yet, not yet. No. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mokote awe ako kandina yo. Was that, was that the actual next one? I'll give her a round of applause. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, Christelle, are ready? Yeah. Christelle, do you know, do you know Congolese music? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, Okay. So by the way, because everyone on the stage is Congolese, so you don't know it, we're taking away your Congolese card. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. <laughs> okay. Second song. Let's go. Okay, next, 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 next. Okay, thank you so much, Christelle. Oh, you can go to the other side. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, are you ready? No. Are you ready? Okay, come forward, come forward, come forward. Let's come forward, let's come forward. All right, all right. All right, okay. Are you ready? Okay, DJ. Mascara. Whenever you're ready. Mascara. Okay, DJ, do we have one more song? Yes, no? Yes? Okay. Who wants to redeem themselves? You wanna Okay, okay, Christelle, redeem yourself. Alright, alright, alright. Alright, alright, alright. So this one will get the audience to decide on whether she gets to keep her Congolese card. Oh yes. So are you ready? DJ, whenever you're ready. Okay, 
Okay, audience, does she get to keep her Congolese card? All right, all right, all right, all right. Does she get to keep her Congolese card? No, no, oh, oh. Okay, what about her? Does she get to keep her Congolese card? Okay, <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, this is, thank you so much for, for participating. Can we give them a round of applause, please? Give them a round of applause. See, I was trying to prove a point. I was trying to prove a point, you know? Um, if I'm going to be honest, I have no clue what is being said in the music. And that's why I know sometimes my mom will ask me, um, do you know what they say? I'm like, nope. <laughs> but the rhythm is nice. Okay, cool. So, um, <laughs> next time, next time. Okay, okay, so, uh, did you have fun with that one? Was it good? Thank you so much for your participation. So, I'm gonna need you to make some noise because our next speaker is a National Party MP who has been coming and supporting us for as long as I can remember. We are so grateful that she's here tonight again. Can we make some noise for Melissa Lee? Woo -hoo -hoo! Thank you, Favour. I am short, so short strike take a long time to get up onto the stage. Um, uh, bonsoir. Um, <laughs> you can say it louder if you want. <laughs> That's the loudest table over there. Five girls, six girls. Thank you. Hopefully I'll get a big cheer at the end. Uh, Francois, thank you so much for the invitation that you actually extend to me. It is much appreciated. And Evelyn was over there. I don't see her. I'd like to acknowledge her, obviously. And all of the young people who are actually performing and getting ready. And, you know, I, I am so impressed. And I have to actually say, as a member of parliament, you know, I don't really want to be repeating the speech that Francois actually gave and Evelyn actually said as well, because I think the message is actually rather similar. You know, congratulations on the 62nd, you know, Independence Day. And it is not just the African nations that actually do that. There are many other countries around the world, including my country of birth, that was invaded. Um, had a, we were a colony of another country, and we also actually have Independence Day. And there are things that actually happen in history, which is sometimes very painful to remember. Uh, in Korea, I don't know if I've actually mentioned this before, 200,000 Korean girls, most of them teenagers, were taken as sex slaves by the colonizing army. And um, I don't think they ever actually apologized. But these are things that happen in history, something that you know, we need to remember that it never happens again. And I think even though I left Korea, but, you know, many, many moons ago, I left Korea in 1976. I think I'm actually aging myself when I actually say that. I like to pretend I was only one, but I was slightly older than that. And I've lived in New Zealand since 1988, 34 years in this country. And I think we have to reflect as New Zealanders, who are hyphenated New Zealanders, I'm a Korean New Zealander, Congolese New Zealanders, what can we actually do in New Zealand to represent and maintain our language? I know for a fact that for the Korean community, the reason I'm fluent in Korean is my parents insisted I maintain my Korean language. I hated them. I hated my parents because they made me go to Korean language school every Saturday. All through school. While all my friends were doing school, like sports, I had to go on Saturday, like normal school, after I've done a full week of school, normal school, I had to go to Korean school to learn Korean language and Korean culture. I said I hated my parents. Yep, that was when I was a child. I hated them. But when I grew up and realized that the benefit that they've actually given me to maintain my language, to know my culture, and to know my history made me a better version of me if I wasn't the person who actually went to normal school and never attended Korean school. So for all of you parents who are maintaining your language teaching your children the culture, 
and the history. Give yourselves a round of applause. And all of you young people, I hope you may hate your parents now like I did when I was forced to learn Korean language. I hope that when you actually get older, you would appreciate your parents for the effort that they've actually put in. Just to respond to what em Evelyn actually said, we need to be unified as New Zealanders who are hyphenated because we don't actually forget our history, but we are now in New Zealand. In order to represent you better, we need your voice. I can represent you, but we also need people who will represent your own community. So any one of you who's interested in politics, come and see me. Because I think you can represent your community better than I could. You know your history, you know your language, you know the issues of your own community. Just like I do, of my own community. But the thing is that we also need numbers. We need numbers. And when Evelyn said we need to be united as a community, as African nations, as ethnic communities, we all need to be united. Because a lot of things that go on in this country, when you first come to this country after you've actually settled here for a little while, a lot of the problems go right across the ethnic, you know, ethnic community. It doesn't really matter whether you're African or Asian, whether you're Congolese or Korean, similar issues actually do happen. I was told in Parliament to go back home to Korea. I've been in New Zealand for 34 years. I left Korea when I was a child and people still tell me to go back home to Korea. It does exist. It exists in all fo forms, and it happens to all of us. And not only do we need to build resilience, we actually need to build confidence. We also need to build support networks. We also need to build the voice. How many of you have actually reached out to your mem member of parliament? Apart from Francois, who actually invited me to meet these events, you know, and Evelyn, who actually tells me what's happening, but have you ever reached out during COVID? You can say, oh, the government doesn't do very much. Well, one of the things you can actually do is help yourself, right? How do you help yourself? You need support, you actually get MPs to actually help you. One of the things that I did, for example, for my own community, the government never had any COVID information in the Korean language. I raised it in parliament, not only Korean language, I said, I, I said in parliament, ethnic languages also need to be provided to the ethnic communities who actually have difficulty in English language. It wasn't provided. It was actually the Korean doctors, nurses, my assistants and myself who translated the COVID information and passed it on to the Korean community, for example. And it happened. I'm sure it actually happened in your own community as well. So we need voices. We need to raise this issue. If you're quiet, nobody knows that there is an issue. If you have an issue, you need to raise it. So I look forward to receiving information, conversation, complaints, also, you know, compliments will also be quite nice. If you think we're doing a good job, please tell us, because I think it's always very nice. Thank you for having me. May you have a wonderful Independence Day. Uh, vive la liberté! Thank you so much, Melissa Lee. We appreciate you coming out tonight. So um, next, we have our tribal dancer. So this is where I'm going to need your participation again. Um, um, Congo, um, actually, here's a fun fact. Congo is actually made up of more than 200 tribes. Um, although we don't have all tribes represented in this room, um, we do want to acknowledge those that are represented. So what's going to happen is our DJ will play a song that will resonate with a specific tribe. If the song resonates with you and your tribe, if you love it, if you feel it, we invite you to come up on stage and dance. And then the next tribe, I'll call out the next tribe, and then I'll call out the next tribe. But please don't be shy come out you don't have to come all the way on the stage you can dance down here if you want to but we do encourage you to come up and dance <laughs>
Yes, it's the time for the cake so that we can uh, add a bit of uh, dessert in our meal. All right. So it's the 62nd Independence Day, and uh, I will maybe ask us to sing a happy anniversary to the Congo independence, to the Congo. And uh, from there, we will cut the cake and share with you all. So, happy birthday to you. <coughs> happy birthday to Happy birthday, dear Congo. Happy birthday to you. Yip yip yip. Yip yip yip. Yeah, we sing happy birthday because uh, that was uh, the birth of our country uh, in uh, the third, the thirtieth of June, nineteen sixty. Thank you to all of you who have responded to our invitation being here to support the Congolese community and share our history and uh, also to enable uh, all of you to know us, to know our culture and to know what the Congolese is about. And uh, by doing that, so it's also an opportunity for us to know you and uh, to know all your culture as well, coming one as a unit. A special thank to all our brothers and sisters who came far from uh, Hamilton, the Congolese community in Hamilton, who are here. So thank you for being present and uh, being with us. And um, also, I know I thank all our special guests, and, uh, but I want to send a special thing to all the people who have helped us having this man. So, the special thanks uh, is first to Mama Genevieve uh, Kaimbe Konko for the work that she has done all this time and uh, to try to bring all the other moms in the community in order to prepare the meal and get it ready and the nice food. I'm sure you guys have enjoyed it. And uh, personally, the pundu that I ate Oh my gosh, that was, uh, I know it's uh, the hand of Mama Bahati, uh, just to show how much our Congolese uh, women can cook and they know how to feed us. And um, also, so thank you to all the women, all the mama, and um, also, there were also some gentlemen who have done the barbecue for us. So, Nico and uh, Eddie for doing that. <clears throat> and uh, also, I would like to thank the DJ that will be with us, DJ Aznat. <laughs> so, she has prepared some uh, good songs, and uh, we will uh, dance here, and all of you will be. Uh, I'm sure you will enjoy it uh, all overnight. And uh, also, a special thank to my vice president, to the executive committee that we have seen here. Uh, maybe I didn't have the opportunity. Executive, if you are there, I will uh, just call you. So you have seen them, but uh, just for you to know them as well. Our vice president, Olivier Mogisho. Olivier, Mr. Olivier, you can come. 
So, uh, Vice President, Mr. Olivier, and we have uh, our treasurer, the person who helped us uh, have our books in order. So, Mama Bahati, Bilashaka was there, Kizungu, sorry, and uh, Mama Bahati was there. So, and uh, maybe some of the food that you guys uh, ate tonight comes from her shop. So she, if you want to know where to get uh, some pondu, some good food, so you can see Mama Bahati uh, after the ceremony. So she will give you the address and come and visit. And we have also Mama Genevieve. Mama Genevieve is uh, the woman lead affairs and uh, social committee. So that is us um, as an executive committee. So we had the support of those young people that I have shown you here. So Daniela, Feva, Irmen Naomi, Aznat, uh, Zoe, Francis, uh, Blessing, and also Holly. So thank you all for the work that you have done. And uh, I will uh, leave you in the good hand of our DJ for the rest of the night. So as you know, we are Congolese. The night is not finished. So we gave you energy to see you on the dance floor. <laughs>
Tu gara kintuade 